We have a special treat for you. Somebody in very, very high demand, somebody that I went to the mat for. We definitely had a very eventful week together, but you don't always get what you want. And he is uh, a great American patriot and someone I'm excited to talk to today. It is Matt Gates. Matt, welcome to the program. Matt, I know this last week was a roller coaster for you. How are you holding up, Matt? Uh, I'm great. I am so excited about where this transition stands. And I know there are people disappointed that I won't be the next attorney general. But you have to understand, this is the political process. And sometimes the path you're on is uh, is one that takes you to a different place, and it could be a glorious place. My good friend Pam Bondi is going to be a phenomenal attorney general for Donald Trump. She has the legal acumen. She hates criminals. She is uh, a bright legal mind and a fellow Floridian. So I think that even though the path will take me to a different station in life and a different place to fight for our agenda and President Trump, uh, we've got a great person in place. And I enjoyed the time on the Hill, frankly, talking with senators. And we had great momentum. When people got to hear my vision for the Department of Justice, taking out the weaponization, uh, implementing the president's uh, immigration agenda, uh, changing the Office of Civil Rights to actually fight for the free speech on college campuses that so many of your viewers and listeners care about, attacking the precursors to fentanyl and dismantling the censorship industrial complex. That's exactly the work that Pam Bondi is highly qualified to do. And again, while our discussions were going well, I found myself having to do two jobs at one time, Charlie, and you, you got a front row seat to this. I, I had a full-time job explaining to senators that Maybe a tweet I sent about them was rash and not reflective of how I would serve as attorney general. And at the same time, I was having to build out the Department of Justice with uh, the right human talent, the right policy infrastructure. And Pam Bondi's confirmation uh, won't have some of the sharp edges that mine would have. It won't take the same long process. So uh, AG Bondi will be able to start implementing those Trump policies right away. So we're ready on day one. We remember that it was the Department of Justice with Sally Yates on day one of the last Trump administration where a lot of our agenda was scuttled, where they started the, the whole Russia hoax nonsense, where they limited the president's ability uh, to do what was necessary on some immigration fronts. And so with Pam Bondi ready on day one, we're going to be so much more successful. And now you and me and the rest of the America First Army we're going to get right back to work uh, scouring for talent. And uh, you and I have been very involved at Mar-a-Lago at finding patriotic Americans who want to do incredible service, not for themselves, for the country, and putting them in a position to succeed. So I might not lead the league in scoring in the upcoming few months, but I want to lead the league in assists. I want to help you find those great folks, get them in great position, and see that President Trump is a historically successful president. So, Matt, I want to build that out and continue uh, to go into that. But first, I just want to address some of the speculation. So, some people say it was, you know, the House Ethics Report. Some people say that there were five immovable senators. I just want to briefly touch on this, Matt, because there was so much media nonsense around it and lies about you and your character. And I was out there defending every single day. Uh, I just want you to have an opportunity to address that once and for all. We can kind of put this to rest, Matt. What, what what happened here? Yeah, the the there is a play that is run in Washington when they're trying to smear somebody. And, you know, they, they go and dredge up false years old allegations of the most salacious and, and clickbait -y flavor possible. And in this case, they were those allegations were coming from sources that Merrick Garland's DOJ had already deemed not credible. Like if the things that the House Ethics Report were true, I would be under indictment and probably in a prison cell. But of course they're false because when you test them against other records, when you test them against other testimony, it all falls apart very quickly. But I was dealing with a politically motivated body they didn't like me because of what I did to Kevin McCarthy. All of them were handpicked by Kevin McCarthy, and they had an axe of crime. So that was going to serve as at least enough of a basis to delay my confirmation as attorney general. And I could have answered all those questions. I could have engaged in a months-long fact battle, but we don't have months to go through that. We got to have an AG ready to go day one to implement the immigration agenda and, and work on the other key policy uh, deregulatory objectives of the president. 
<clears throat> then as it relates to where the Senate was, Charlie, look, there were senators uh, that had not gotten to yes. And what I can tell you is the movement was unidirectional. Uh, the more I got to talk to, to senators, the more they started to understand that these priorities of mine would bring the country together. They would get the Justice Department back on track. And frankly, they're going to be the priorities of the Trump administration um, under a fantastic attorney general, Pam Bondi. I know what an immigration hardliner Pam Bondi is. I know that she's got no tolerance for the censorship. I know that she actually was part of the election integrity infrastructure in Florida that became the model for the country. And she can deliver that election integrity through our civil rights division. So uh, it was more a matter of pace than anything. And the pace was just going to be too, too long for me. And with someone like Pam that we can put right there in that spot, we're going to be far more successful as an administration. So, so Matt, I, I now have to ask about just what your plans are and it's okay if you have to, you know, um, punt on it because you might not know. It's important to know you resigned from this Congress, not the next Congress. Our audience is 100% behind Matt Gates. by the way. They are very, very upset that you were not be, you know, able to get all the way to attorney general. I have to ask, what, what is next for Matt Gates? Yeah, I'm still going to be in the fight, but it's going to be from a new perch. I do not intend to join the 119th Congress. There are a number of fantastic Floridians who've stepped up to run for my seat, people who have inspired with their heroism, with their public service. And uh, I'm actually excited to, to see uh, Northwest Florida go to new heights and, and have great representation. Charlie, I've been in an elected office for 14 years. I first got elected to the state house when I was 26 years old, and uh, I'm 42 now. And I've got some other goals in life that I'm eager to pursue with my wife and my family. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to be fighting for President Trump. I'm going to be doing whatever he asks of me, as I always have. But uh, I think that eight years is probably enough time in the United States Congress. You know, in Florida, our voters got to vote on term limits for state government. And the, the campaign was eight is enough. And so you can only do eight years in the Florida House of Representatives. And so it seems like a, a pretty poetic time to uh, allow that great new blood to come in, uh, to allow my district to have high quality representation. And don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not taking off for like, you know, a tropical excursion uh, for the rest of my life. I am here to help save this country. And one thing you know, the great patriots at Turning Point know, we need people at every level. We need brilliant lawyers on the outside. We need tough congressmen and congresswomen on the inside. We need a, a, a leadership structure under President Trump that's going to allow for durability of our movement and, and the ability to continue this great realignment of our politics. And so I'll play a part in that. I plan to be a big voice, but maybe not as, a, as an elected member of the government. As you say here in your tweet, uh, I look forward to continuing to fight to save our country, just maybe from a different post, American flag. So I guess we'll just wait and see. Is that fair to say, Matt? Yeah, I, I think that we've got a lot of work to do within the Trump administration uh, to find other great folks for great things. I'm going to play a key role in that. And you know what? I'm going to have a lot more to say about this in Arizona at America Fest. I'm going to be speaking there. That's what I'm talking it'll be about. The first time I can give a speech without the constraints of uh, public service on me. So you won't want to miss it. Wow, that, that's quite a statement. Matt, I want to get your thoughts on this. There's a lot of rumors swirling about who might run the FBI next. Uh, one of the names that is being um, discussed is Mike Rogers, who was unsuccessful in his Senate bid in the state of Michigan. Uh, last night, Andy McCabe, who we all know is the worst of the worst, endorsed Mike Rogers uh, to become FBI director. Uh, Andy McCabe went on CNN and said it's a totally reasonable and logical selection um, to nominate to lead the agency, pointing to his knowledge of the intel community and his experience at the FBI. So Andy McCabe has endorsed Mike Rogers. How should we think about this, Matt Gates? Well, I thought I had the worst day for prospects of serving in the Department of Justice. But if Andy McCabe endorsed Mike Rogers and that information gets to President Trump, and I suspect it will, I don't think it will do very well for Mike Rogers' case. Uh, I was for Mike for Senate. I, it's unfortunate that that he ran a few points behind the president and didn't prevail there. But 
I think that Mike Rogers will be asked really tough questions from some of the civil libertarians in the Republican uh, conference about just how robust the surveillance state should be. We've seen the surveillance state weaponized against Republicans and Democrats alike. We've seen the Constitution torn asunder in the desire to allow the FBI to be very snoopy. And Mike Rogers has been a champion for the most aggressive actions in that respect. And uh, I think that President Trump wants to see more reform there probably than Mike Rogers does. Let's uh, let's play cut 82. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Well, let me see which clip this is here before we go into it. Um, yeah, this is Mike Rogers, some of his thoughts on President Trump. Play cut 82. I don't believe today as I'm sitting here that Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee in 2024. Don't believe it. I don't think it's helpful for the president of the United States to attack the media. It's petty and it's certainly below the stature of the office of the president of the United States. It's beneath the office in and of itself. Actions and activities unbecoming of the office of the president of the United States. I don't want to spend too much time on your valuable time, Matt, on this, but it seems as if uh, he's not exactly a fan of President Trump. Um, and him becoming FBI director, I, I think his odds are decreasing in real time. And closing here, Matt, uh, we have a mandate. Uh, we have a mandate to fix the DOJ and fix the FBI. You mentioned some of this previously, but what are some of the other things that you had to really think about this last week, Matt? You had to really go into um, planning mode because you were the attorney general designate. Um, what specific items did you come up with in the last week as you went through these briefings and these transition meetings that you want to share with our audience of action items for Pam Bondi, Todd Blanche, and the incoming Department of Justice team? There's going to be a lot of self-deporting at the Department of Justice. That was happening when I was the Attorney General designate. I'm sure it will continue with Pam Bondi because people know that reform is coming. We're not going to be doing things the same way we used to do them. And so you're going to have a lot of positions to fill. And one of the most important things for us to do is get really bright lawyers, not from just inside the Beltway of Washington, but from the great DA offices around the country, from the state attorneys general, who have people who feel that call to come and help us reclaim the Department of Justice as a valued institution constrained by the Constitution, not as the enforcement wing of the political left in the country. And we've seen that under both President Trump and President Biden, it must change. The other thing is a bit granular, but I think people will understand it. When you have the recalcitrants who dig in and want to do things like change FISA applications illegally and fraudulently to ensnare President Trump or other Republicans, you have to put those people on the line. You have to take those people out of their big cushy offices in the Kennedy building or in the Hoover building, and you've got to send them out into the field prosecuting crimes in Indian country or, or working in litigating sections of the department. And if you do that, I think some of the folks who prefer to play politics than follow the facts and the law will indeed leave the Department of Justice, creating more opportunity for those patriotic Americans that we've discussed. Also, there has to be a real effort from the Office of Personal Management from the very, very beginning to figure out who was breaking the law with FISA and then fire those people. When Inspector General Horowitz, who was appointed by Obama, reviewed their conduct, they were breaking the law 38 times an hour. They were spying on their ex-lovers, their neighbors, their spouses, co-workers, and the people that did that, if they are fired for cause, then it will have a very cleansing and therapeutic effect throughout the department. Very quickly, uh, 25 seconds, Matt. What is your advice to Tulsi Bobby that you learned this last week that they should know to get across the finish line? Spend as much time with senators as possible. My best moments were with some of my harshest critics, because when you lay out your plans and your agenda, how that's all going to fit together in great ways with the administration, senators will move. So don't give up on them. Work them hard and uh, and, and really have detailed plans. I didn't have senators asking me uh, about uh, anything other than the vision of the department. And everyone should follow that advice. Matt Gates, big things are coming for you. I know it. Everybody, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. We're doing so much good work here at Turning Point USA. Also, get your tickets to AmFest. That's AmFest.com, the biggest party of the year in Phoenix Convention Center. We have Tucker Carlson and really big speakers coming. I'll be there. It's going to be unbelievable. Meet your future husband, future wife. It's going to be great. AmFest.com, A-M-F-E-S-T.com.
Get there. Uh, go get the tickets. It's going to be amazing. And again, please subscribe and hit this bell. We appreciate it. And if you listen to audio podcasts, subscribe to the Charlie Kirk Show podcast. That's Charlie Kirk Show podcast. We won, everybody. We won. I need to get this hat. Daisy, you can get me one of these hats. We won. And uh, if you guys want a limited edition signed MAGA hat right here, last thing I'll say is become a member, members.charliekirk.com, to get a limited edition MAGA hat. We have 5,000 to send out, don't we, Daisy? Over, like 8, we have 8,000 hats I have to sign. 8,000 hats. God bless.